Welcome to the Jay Lake Show, starring me. Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to be playing some Disney Infinity. I'm going to be building a toy box uh, themed for Rapunzel. And I'm going to start off by um, working on the gameplay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set down an action button. I'm going to place it here and I'm going to use that on occasion to start and test the um, the gameplay logic. And the gameplay that I'm going to do is have it so there's randomly um, choice <clears throat> sorry there's randomly chosen uh, areas that an object will appear and you have to go and get that object from the locations and you won't know which one it's going to be at so you'll have to search to try to uh, find the objects <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to put down is a randomizer if I can find it there we go so when this action button is pressed it will send tell this one to action and then it will randomly display the um, objects that I'll have connected to it I think I'm gonna have four uh, four different objects that are going to appear in random locations. So I'm going to have uh, four logic gates. And I'm going to use four replayers as well. I'm also going to have these location, these locators. I'll put them in the appropriate spot when I get to um, designing the uh, the level. But I'm going to have those locations. And they're going to be connected to dynamic triggers. Okay. And when you enter the trigger area of the dynamic triggers, there's going to be a button prompt to collect the object that's going to appear. And the reason I have logic gates is so that when you've collected one of the items it will have the randomizer uh, pick another uh, random location for those uh, objects to appear and I don't want it to do the same one multiple times in a row so I will close the logic gate and it won't be so if it receives an input the input will be blocked and it will go to another one of the locations and it won't open until a different one has been chosen because it gets kind of irritating when you're, you're playing a game and it's supposed to be random but it seems it uh, appears at the same spot a lot it's not as fun and kind of easy in some situations So I'm going to 
add a location for this um, dynamic trigger area. I'll go into the properties and I'll set the target for the dynamic trigger area as the connected locator. And I think I'll do a distance of um, five. I like a distance of five. It's just a little bit more than a, um, a basic block. Actually, I'm going to need another logic gate for each one of these uh, trigger areas. And I'll let you know why in a minute here. Because when I enter the trigger area, I want it to send an input to this logic gate. And the logic gate will be closed when that location has the, um, the object that I'm collecting up here. So if it's not there, I don't want to enter that trigger area and then it's tell me, or and then, then it has this button prompt up here, which is going to be like, hey, you know, collect the, uh, the gimmick, the object. So when this dynamic trigger area is entered by any player, this logic gate will receive an input. So I'm not going to have it do anything when it outputs. But when the input is blocked, this context button will trigger for, I guess it could do triggering player, since it's a, a logic gate holds um, triggering actor information when it passes through, so that should be fine. <clears throat> and then when I exit the dynamic trigger area, any player does, sorry, that's not what I want. When exited by any player, this will deactivate for the triggering player. All right. And when this logic gate will close, will be when this one closes. I'm also going to need a time delayer uh, so I can close that logic gate once it is... Um... Alright, I'll actually explain it this way by going through the motions here. Alright, so the random trigger one of the randomizer will send an input to this logic gate. And when this logic gate outputs, it will play back whatever object I have on this um, replayer. And also, when this logic gate outputs, that is when this logic gate will close. So then we approach this locator which will be near the object that appears, I will be able to um, trigger this button prompt to appear so I can collect it. Now, when that button prompt shows up, I'm going to put on here collect object. Deactivate, cool. And when the context button is pressed by the triggering player, this replayer will clear, so the object will disappear. And 
when it is pressed by the triggering player, this logic gate will open again. So then if I enter this area, this dynamic trigger area, it will send an input to the logic gate and it will be closed so it will have an output and nothing will happen. So this won't appear when I don't want it to. That's one thing I really get bothered by uh, when I play some people's toy boxes is they're very extravagant and they look great and they're kind of fun but things happen when you don't want them to because they don't either turn off a trigger area or close a logic gate and um, then it's kind of distracting it makes me feel not so good about playing that toy box even though um, everything else of it's really great so I just like things a little more polished I guess kind of particular and now where was I yes I will also want <clears throat> a time delayer Where's my time delayer? I love time delayers. I use them a lot. So, when this logic gate outputs, I want this to start the time delayer. It's going to be a very short um, amount of time. Point, what is it, 25 is the shortest time. I don't like to doing uh, a setup for a quicker than a time delayer. Uh, they're useless. I, not useless. They're pointless. Uh, it does help if you have gameplay that's going very quickly. But for this situation, um, it doesn't have to go fast as long as it shuts that logic gate when the delay is complete. So when it completes, it will close this logic gate. And this will remain closed until another one of these <clears throat> are randomly triggered. Okay. But I'll take care of that in a little while. So I also want it. So that when this context button is uh, pressed by the triggering actor, it will have another random action on the randomizer. I'm also going to have a score uh, card here and a challenge maker. because I want it to continue until the gameplay to continue until you reach a certain score I don't know what it's gonna be yet I'll have to uh, test it a few times to see what an appropriate score to play to would be I don't want it to be too short or too long so <clears throat> I'm gonna test it uh, a few times but I'll get to that part for right now I'm going to have it so then when this one outputs, I want it to open all of the other logic gates as, as well, you know, uh, because this one here would be closed after it was triggered, right? And I want it to open again but just not until after another logic gate was randomly picked over here, right? And I'm going to do that with all of them. So when this one outputs, it's also going to open this one because I don't know which order they're going to go in. That's it's random. <laughs> and I also want this one when it outputs to open this one. Same thing here. If one of the other ones are closed after this one gets picked and outputs 
I want it to open the ones that might be closed. So then they're eligible to have the object appear again uh, come another cycle of the randomizer uh, choosing an action. That was wrong. I do not want that one open, sorry. Did I do that for another one too? When I outputs, yes. When I outputs, yes. When it outputs, so that's what I wanted. And this logic gate, okay, cool. So, when it outputs, I want to open this one. I'll, to save time for the videos, I'm not going to go through all of that with each one of these logic gates. Well, maybe I will. Just, um... Just so I don't forget. So, on an output... Alright, so, but I also have to tell it what to do when it does send an input to this logic gate and it's closed, the input blocked. Well in that case I think I'm just going to go and have it send an input to this one. No. Yeah, I'll just have it send an input to the next one down in line here. Input. Same thing for this one. <clears throat> if this one is picked again when the um, logic gate is closed, the input blocked will tell this logic gate to receive an input here. And then When this one's input blocked, it will send an input to that one. And when this one input blocked, input over here. So that way, if one of them is closed and the randomizer chooses that action again, the input will be blocked and it will choose another um, or it will send an input to a different scenario here for another object to appear at a different location um, you know what I think that's all I'm gonna do for this video um, when you watch again I will have all this logic that I've done here for this locator in location I will have all of it for done for each of the four scenarios or four locations and then after that we will get to um, working a little bit more on the gameplay and level design I will also the last thing that I'll do for the video is um, build kind of a beginning cutscene that will introduce you to you know what the challenge is and what you're going to be doing um, but yeah that was fun and then if you have any suggestions for um, other gameplay videos uh, I would like to listen to them but Yeah, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do for this video. So next time, uh, we'll get back to work on this uh, Rapunzel-themed toy box. I hope everyone has a great day.